Uh, yeah, my name is Todd List, and I'm going to give you a brief background about who I am. I'm the geek who speaks people. Uh, it's the main floor ones, I think, Anthony. Well, all right, I'll just talk. We'll get through this anyway. Uh, well, that's a little too much. All right, fireworks, everybody. All right, this is cool. We'll get there. Uh, bear with me. I'm running on uh, two hours of sleep. I wanted to maintain solidarity with the people who had to travel a long way to get here, so I made sure to... Yes, solidarity. Ooh, oh, wait, we're not in South, South Africa. Uh, anyway... <laughs> I got into WordPress a little over a year ago after deciding that, you know what, I've been pulling computers into my job as an engineer far more than I was interested in actually doing the engineering work, so I dove into this. And this is what I felt when I first started working with WordPress. Where do I find a theme? Well, it turns out there are too many places to find a theme. And I was confused for a very long time. So my goal today is to help you guys and gals walk through this and simplify the path. I want to show a way forward that will help you figure out what to do with your WordPress theme. Now, note that I'm simplifying the path. This is not a shortcut to a killer website. This will give you some direction, but it's not going to make you an instant success overnight. Now, I really like what Brad said at the beginning in the keynote about getting your content up. Everybody's concerned about, I don't like my theme. What does my theme look like? Oh, it's awful. How important is it? Is it really an explanation point or is it just a period? <laughs> well, you know, let's take a look into this. Uh, ben Bader, I heard him talk at Ignite Detroit this year. and. He has a very successful website. He's from the Detroit area. We didn't start to really grow until we invested some money in the design. And they have a very popular website called Text From Last Night. And you can find Ben on Twitter, at Ben Bador. Uh, he's a neat guy. But in his talk, they had developed the system to create the content. And what they do is they get text messages from people around the country who are just sending drunken texts about stupid stuff they did. And this aggregates them and it posts them up by zip code. Well, until they actually put some money into the design and hired somebody to make it look a little prettier, it really didn't take off. So there's a, a point for, hey, we really need to get some impressive appearance going. But then I read a blog post the other day by a guy named Chris Brogan, who is really big in the social media circles. And no one ever asked Hemingway which pencils he used to write his books. I thought about that and said, yeah. So why is everybody asking, what theme do you use? Now, you know what, let me tell, we'll talk about this. We're here to get down to work, so I'm going to loosen things up just a little bit here. And maybe it's really not so much about the theme. didn't know, yes, my blog could beat up your blog because I use WordPress and not TypePad. <laughs> Let's take a little bit of a look at some of the influential blogs on the websites and different places in the world here. And I want you to look very closely at the way these look because this is really important for what we're trying to get to here. Uh, well, before I do that, how many people here would rather have a beautiful blog or a blog that has tons of visitors every day? Visitors, yeah. All right, well, let's look at one from a guy named Seth Godin. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, how about Naomi Dunford from a little company called IndieBiz that does a lot of really good marketing stuff? That looks a lot like this one. Wait a minute. How about Chris Brogan? He talked about the pencils and Hemingway. Oh, wait, did I do something wrong here? No. 
That's how a lot of people get your content. If you're publishing frequently, it shows up in something like Google Reader. I don't go to Seth Godin's website. If I did, this is what I'd see. All right, it looks simple. It is simple. And I know Naomi put a bunch of money into getting somebody to redesign her site not long ago, and it rocks. But it rocks not because of the site design, but because of the content. She writes some killer stuff, and she swears even more than Brad does. <laughs> Chris Brogan has another simple site, but it works, and he puts out good content on a frequent basis. So what we can learn from this is content is king. It doesn't hurt if you're cute. Now, I know that everybody here wants a nice looking blog. And that's cool. I'm good with that because that's how I help people out. I help you figure out what your website does. And then I went through a, developed a process to put all of this stuff together after going through the torture I went through of trying to pick a theme. So let's get into it. First of all, you need to know what it is that you do. What's the purpose of your website? And you're going to say, what does this have to do with theme selection? A ton. Because if you don't know who your target audience is, how can you market to them? You need to do some competitive analysis. Go out and look at other websites in your industry. Look at stuff in your niche. What are they doing? What kind of content do they have? Do they have an about page? What does it say? Do they have a contact form? What fields are on it? What other categories are they using? Do some competitive analysis. A recent client didn't like that term, so I said, go look at the trailblazers, because you don't have to compete with them, but they're showing you a, a path forward. You're welcome to choose that one. That's one of the key steps. Next is you need to build your foundation. If you're not careful with your foundation, you're gonna build, in, you're gonna build a website that starts to tip after a few years, and eventually it'll topple. This building has been around for a long time, but nowhere near as long as this one. This one's been around so long we don't even know who built it or how they did. Who had a better idea of a foundation? If you do your research up front and plan how you're going to engage the people who you're talking with, you'll have a better chance at success in your website. Take that information and build a site plan. This is just a simple, start with a sheet of paper and say, home in the top left corner because that's where people are going to come if they just type in your domain name. Now when you start getting search engines and other things coming in, it's going to bring people directly to particular content and that's a different issue. But start with a site plan. Figure out, all right, what are the categories that I'm going to do? Just kind of guess at them and then start developing content. I cannot stress this enough. You have to add content. I was at a meetup with some <coughs> Drupal people not long ago, and one of the guys was complaining about the lack of themes available for that particular development platform. Well, one of the de developers who was there said, I don't want a canned theme because good design is integral with the content. You can't pick a good theme that's effective for your site until you know what you're going to write about. So develop content, then go back and start over. Iterate. Then start with where you are. I don't care if you've got one blog post and you still have the hello, welcome to WordPress blog, just start adding more content. And I know it's easy for me to say this, it's taken me, I, I joke with my friends, I blog once every three months whether I need to or not. <laughs> But start where you are. If you have a theme in place, use it. Keep adding content. We'll talk more about the other things in a minute. If you are just starting out or you're starting a brand new site, start with the new 2010 theme. Now, the 2010 theme that came out with WordPress 3 is pretty cool. It's got a lot more widget space at the bottom. It's got some additional layout options that you didn't get with previous versions. And it looks clean. It, it's a simple, effective, you can upload a different graphic and change the header on it. 
If you know a little bit of code, you can go in and tweak the colors. You can do a lot with it. Add content. And then upgrade when and if it makes sense. This is a point that Chris Brogan made in that Hemingway Pencils article. Upgrade if you can afford it and if it makes sense. Don't upgrade to a premium theme just for the sake of saying, hey, I have the latest Woo Themes theme. Now, we like Woo Themes. Thank you, Woo Themes, for sponsoring the conference. But don't do it unless you need to. All right, we're going to go back to college real briefly here. Uh, remember the SATs? You had these little goofy word puzzles. All right, finish the analogy. Furniture is to house as Google is to a web browser, drill bit is to a byte, fish is to a bicycle, where'd that come from, or content is to your website. It is D, thank you, sir, congratulations. Your website is your online home. This is Kubrick. This was the default theme that came with WordPress up until about March. It was a little bit ramshackle, but it did the job. It kept the rain off and it kept the content in place. This is 2010. It's a little bit more upscale. Nice little white picket fence. It's simple. It's functional. It's a good place to start. Great starter home. Great starter theme. Now we have premium themes. I'm not going to list a specific one because there are lots of companies that make premium themes. But if you think about the content a little bit, and you start back at the beginning with, uh, where did I start with this? What kind of furniture did you have in here? Probably not a lot. Your furniture is your content. Okay. If I upgrade from that to this and keep the same content, what's going to happen if somebody walks into your house? They're going to look around and say, Oh, uh, where's the table? Where do we sit? Maybe you furnish this cute little house. You've got a nice little one-bedroom place. You've got a, a couch. You've got a dining room table. You've got a dishwasher shoehorned in because you couldn't fit it in between the refrigerator and the sink. But you go from that to this, and somebody walks into this place. What are they going to think? Where's the furniture? This is what's going to happen if you jump to a premium theme too soon. So when should you leap? First, I suggest that you should have at least three featured articles or pages or categories with some depth. I don't want to have one post in each category. Because if you're going to link to a category page that talks about, uh, let's just take golf. I don't know why I fall in this analogy. I'm not a golfer, but I know there are people who do. Maybe you have one category for clubs and another for uh, country clubs and then another one for PGA Tour. If you only have one link in the category for clubs, but it's a featured post and it's showing up on the front of your page, what's going to happen when somebody goes to that? They're going to think, this bozo hasn't done any work, and they're probably not going to come back. So make sure you've got some depth in your categories. Also, if you're going to go to a premium theme, make the commitment to yourself and to your users as well, but to yourself, that you're going to get some high quality images. I hate to burst your bubble, but you're probably going to have to spend a few bucks at iStock Photo or something similar. Because high quality images will make or break a lot of the premium themes. You can have something that looks really pretty, but if the images are too small and they're not filling the whole box or they're cropped funny, it's going to throw people off. So make that commitment. Oh, WordPress is easy. Yes, it is, relative to doing JavaScript and HTML by yourself. But these premium themes require configuration. There's some assembly required. You might need help with it. There are communities like WordCamp. There is a tremendous support site available, and there are companies that will help you with it. But you need to take the time and ability to configure something like this. I can set up a brand new WordPress theme or site and get it running with 2010 in about 15 minutes, including buying hosting and putting the domain name in place. 
If I get one of the premium themes from Woo Themes or Studio Press, figure at least another three to six hours because you have to figure out where all the content goes, link all the featured content stuff together, get the images in place. Yes, it's a lot easier than having to code it by hand. Finally, is it in your budget? Don't go out and buy a premium theme for the sake of getting a theme. Then you need to start thinking about layouts. And this is where the competitive analysis comes in. These are some of the core layouts. There's a single column, which is just one big block of content. You can have two column with a sidebar on one side or the other. The width of those bars can vary. Doesn't matter too much. There's a three column variation. And then there are sub categories of these and you'll have some of the premium themes will have a bunch of widgeted blocks on the front so this is something that you need to consider and look at it and say okay if I land on this web page do I know what to do next the layouts will help you with that the, the, do, the, do the competitive research see what your other people are doing now you're going to start going out and looking at themes and I want to warn you about color Color confounds. It will, for a lot of people who are not used to looking at things from a design perspective, it will complicate the decision. Let me illustrate by telling a story. Uh, my ex-wife and I were going to buy a couch and we walked into the furniture store and I saw an ugly floral print, ugly floral print, ugly floral print, ugly floral print, and I said, I can't tell the difference. Well. If you take the color away, for some people, it's a little bit easier to see that, oh, the one on the top right has two cushions, so does the one on the top left, but the arms are different. The shape on the top of the back is different. This is talking about layout. This is the structure or the foundation of your online home. Let's take that and apply it to a real life application. One of my clients asked about upgrading to a magazine theme. So I gave him some options, and these are themes by Studio Press. What jumps out from these? What do you notice about these particular themes? Well, I, the one on the left, I see that bright purple block in the top right, and I say, oh, that's cool, got to have it. But I also look at the one on the right and say, wow, powerful, right, bold, border, red border, got to have it. Well, if we take the color away, and I suggest you do this, grab screenshots of a bunch of, bunch of things, pull them into a simple photo editor, and turn them grayscale, and then print them out and look at them side by side. Now you look at stuff, the color is less of an impact. You don't have that emotional tug of, ooh, bright red, or oh, I like purple. And those are fine. But look at the layout and say, oh, okay, now we see that we've got different connections on the top left. We've got these little blocks that go together. And the one on the right is similar, but if you actually go to the live preview, you see there's some animation and some other differences. But I want you to see beyond the color and into the actual layout. Once you get to the point where you're ready to implement a different theme, start working in a sandbox. If you're going to do a lot of changes, develop the theme on a separate WordPress site. You can install those pretty quickly, put it in a subdomain. Nobody else ever has to see it. You can go in and you can tweak it. You can play with the layout, play with the menu structure. Once you're ready, from, use the sandbox to develop stuff. There are people that can help with that. Now, everybody's going to ask, where do I get a theme? These are three of the free theme resources. Uh, I will caution you, you get what you pay for. When I first set up one of my blogs, I went through, in the course of an afternoon, probably six or seven different themes before I settled on one that didn't completely suck. And I would look at them and I would go through that, oh, wow, this is really cool, I like the color. Because I had a certain color inspiration in mind and I put the theme up and then it turned out that I don't like the way the text looks on this one. And at that time I didn't know how to change it. Some of these things you can change yourself. Sometimes you can't. This uh, slideshow will be up. Uh, we will put all these links up on the WordCamp Detroit site. This will go up on SlideShare by tomorrow. I have to go in and add image credits and stuff. But These are some of the 
popular premium theme sources, and this is not an exhaustive list. Woo Themes is good because they sponsored the, contest, the conference. I'm going to keep plugging them because they were awesome. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but that'll be up there. Now, there are some gotchas when picking a theme. I want to talk about some of the traps that you may run into. You'll get some that look really pretty, especially from some of these free theme locations that have hard-coded menus, which is great if you have exactly a home, a blog, uh, about, and a contact page. But if you have something different, you're stuck because you have to go in and change that. If your theme doesn't have the capability for drop-down or sub-level menus, that's probably one to avoid. And don't be constrained by the graphics. We'll see an example of that in a minute. Now, here's the new thing. WordPress 3 came out, and if you're not familiar with it, they rocked out a really cool way for managing content and creating menus. If your theme doesn't support WordPress 3 menus, that could be a little bit of a drawback. There are ways to change it, but you're probably going to have to go in and hack the CSS as well. So be careful with that. Limited layouts. Remember we talked about the single column and the two column? Having multiple layouts available is a really helpful thing. If you want to provide somebody a map to your location and you've got a really narrow theme, if you can give them a single column layout without the sidebar, you have more room for the content. But if you don't have those layouts available, you're kind of stuck. Typography. Ooh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on design because my graphic design skills are not world class. I rely on people to put really cool images together and just steal them from Flickr. Uh, <laughs> but poor contrast or small text is a really bad thing. I have one website, especially if you have a dark background and light text, bump your font size up a couple of points because it's a lot easier to read if it's larger on a black. The other thing is a widget that doesn't collapse gracefully. What do I mean by that? You have these little spaces in the sidebar, and if there's nothing in them, they all say, this is a place where you can add content. Drag your widgets here. And if you don't fill it in, your people come to your website and they see this box on the sidebar. They've got, oh, a great blog post. This is a place where you can add content and you look like you're not so bright. So if they don't collapse or go away easily, there's a, a trick you can just drag a text box in and put a non-breaking space in. If you don't know how to do that, catch me at a break. I can show you. And back to the sum assembly required. This is especially true of a lot of the premium themes. And even some of the ones that hype, you don't need to know code. Bullshit. <laughs> I have a, a client who did a lot of research and he found this really cool theme that has tons and tons of stuff because it has templates for making squeeze pages and it has templates for doing this and he's got a really great business model and I'm really excited for him. But he called me up and said, uh, how do I get my content in? And, he had to navigate some things. And how do I add a, a navigation? Well, some themes don't use menus quite the same way as others. So I had to walk him through, OK, you have to go to this particular page and paste in the URL that you want to use. Yeah, if your eyes are glazing over, you're, you're probably not alone. There are a lot of people in that boat. There's nothing wrong with you. It's because these people are selling stuff on a lot of hype. It's the equivalent of the late night infomercial. Some assembly is required. You're going to have to do a little bit of work. And if you're not willing to get your hands dirty, find somebody who can help you. There are plenty of people out there. All right, let's do a quick case study. This is a, a theme that a friend of mine put together. She found this on one of those free theme sites. And she does a graphic design business, or an, uh, an interior design. She's really cool at what she does. She doesn't have the money to customize a theme, and she was doing theme hopping. Every two to three weeks, she would install another one, and it would break her layout, and it would screw things up. And she came to me with this one. And I looked at it and said, OK, well, let's see. The first iteration, when I went to help her, the, the home page 
was actually misspelled on the first iteration of the theme. It was H-M-O-E. And I thought, wow, that's really cute. Was that intentional? And then uh, she had problems with it, and we went back, and I reloaded the theme, and somebody had fixed it. But we have four menus, home, about, contacts, and FAQ. What if you don't have an FAQ page? What does that link to? That's a problem. This is really cute. This is a, one of these themes that didn't have the ability to add a wider image because we couldn't get rid of the sidebar, not easily. There was no separate layout available for that. Did I mention she takes a lot of pictures of the stuff that she does and wanted to post those? This theme was not working well for her. The uh, About Us section in the top right, you had to dig really deep to find where to replace that text. It was not a widgeted area. I found a way to do it, and I said, you know what? Get a different theme. <laughs> it's, it's cute. Somebody who put this together had tremendous time and skill with Photoshop and creative and buttons and fabric. Great, but it didn't meet her needs. You notice up at the top, that sure, it's pretty, but you can't read the text underneath. There's not enough contrast. These are, things, these are some of the, the gotchas that come out. So let's take about uh, 10 minutes for some questions, and then I'll wrap up. Yeah? Why didn't I have the free WordPress repository listed on my list of themes? Because it just plain slipped my mind. It, yes, that's one I will add when I put this up there. But uh, my intent was to show you how to pick a theme, not necessarily where to find them all, but that is a great resource. And right from your themes page on your dashboard, you can get into that. Other question? Yes? Uh, regarding clutter and specifically you're asking about multimedia and video, is that right? Uh, it can be an issue. Be careful about just having white space around things. And I know there are designers in the room who can talk to that much more in depth than I can. But I see it not so much from an issue of content in the body, although that can be an issue if you start adding these plugins that have the share this with the tweet and Facebook links, and you have another one that says related content, you, you can get a lot of garbage at the bottom of a post, and you have to be careful with that. The other thing that I, I really see clutter showing up in a lot of cases, people like these little tag clouds that are flash-based and float around on their site. How many people actually use that? Take it off your site! It's just, it's just this distraction. That's my opinion. Your mileage may vary. Yes? I Yeah, that's, a, that's one of those little gotchas with the sum assembly required. The question or the, the comment was about premium themes. And when you go look at some of these on uh, Theme Forest or Studio Press, they have just gorgeous stock images that they've spent a little bit of money to put these things together. And they've carefully made these things appealing. It's like photographing a Big Mac and then going into a McDonald's. You order the thing. And it doesn't look like the thing in the picture on the wall. So yes, that is, a, that is a challenge. And that's why I emphasize make the commitment to getting good stock images. It will make a big difference. Yes, Brad. If you're buying premium themes, uh, do you have a specific go-to company that you kind of always use? And if so, why? I do have a relationship with Studio Press, but that's just because I was starting off in this business and realizing that, you know what, it's going to make sense for me to, to buy a developer's license someplace. 
I looked at a bunch of them. I went with Studio Press. Brian Gardner is a great guy. They do some good stuff. But I've also done some work for people who have got stuff on Woo themes, and they make some nice themes too. But in both cases, some assembly required. They don't function exactly the same out of the box as WordPress does. We've got time for one more question, and I think we're going to wrap it up. Yes? Uh, I just wanted to, it's not so much about design or typography, but uh, in the land of free themes, I think it's really important that you follow the links that he suggested and the WordPress.org theme repository because what's ended up happening is sometimes the theme repository is the first result on Google for free WordPress themes, sometimes it's not. But the first five or six pages of results, there's a bunch of themes on there, but what ends up happening is people install these themes and they realize why is there a link advertising some poker site or some porn site at the foot of their site? Yeah. And these themes have encrypted code in them, obfuscated code. So uh, it's just really important that you follow the links he suggests in the theme repository. And if you go to google.com and you type in stop downloading WordPress themes from shady sites, there's actually a great video tutorial from Wingland, a theme lab that operates, he's a great member of the WordPress community. And he, he explains why you should go to reputable sites for free WordPress themes. Cool. Tweet that link out if you would please, or at me at TJ List, and I will make sure that that gets included. That's a great resource. Yeah, one of the comments about some of these free themes, the footer code that's in there has hidden things. They'll, they'll actually encrypt it using some PHP schemes, and somebody who knows what they're doing can get in and untangle the mess, but you end up with a link back to some place that is completely irrelevant and perhaps inappropriate for what you're trying to do. So thanks for the questions. Let me recap real briefly the process. First, start where you are, create a site map, do some research, pick a home page layout, create content. Did I mention that you should create content? And uh, to Brad's point, create content. Get a sandbox to play with the customization. And I'm Todd List. Thank you and happy blogging. My contact information is here. <laughs>